we come into the, into the, into the flow of bhakti from two tracks in this world, basically. A taking track and a, and a renouncing track, track a boga and tyag, uh, a karma and gyan. And we import these influences, to some extent, into our understanding of bhakti. And sometimes we get a karma-oriented bhakti or a, a gyan-oriented bhakti. This is a little problematic, we think. If something's really happening, if there's a lot of people involved, there's buildings, there's money, and think something must be happening there. I'll join that group. <laughs> something like that. Uh, some years ago, I've told a story, some years ago I met a, a, uh, a devotee somewhere, and uh, he said, oh, Maharaj, I hear you're in California now, and preaching there. And I said, yes. He said, how many devotees at your place? I said, four. <laughs> and he like, like was visibly like, oh, I guess I shouldn't have asked. <laughs> There's only four people there. It must not be happening. <laughs> I was quite, uh, I found it quite humorous. Hmm. So if there's a lot of people, or if he's only eating Tulsi leaves on Ikadasi, something like that, something's going on there. Hmm? If, you're, if you have collected a lot of things, or if you can give up all kinds of things, then you have attraction from a worldly perspective. It's interesting that tyag, or bairagya, begets karma, in a sense. Bairagya, detachment, begets enjoyment. Enjoy, it goes both ways. Hmm? Um, there was a guy that used to stand on the parikram around Vrindavan on one leg hmm? with his hair all in a you know, big knot like this and he used to smoke pot to keep standing there all the time. At some, kind of, some kind of yogi. And uh, he stood on one leg, kind of. Not it. <laughs> <laughs> and a little kind of a arm swing that was <laughs> assisting him. And, uh, and eventually there were, he had a group of them that were there. And, <laughs> and, 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 and people came and gave money and, and, and built a big thing and so on and so forth. And well, I visited him once. He offered me a, a toke. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, his, his tag invited all kinds of enjoyment and facilities and, and, and so on and so forth, his renunciation. So these are just the two tracks of the world. Now there are systematic ways to harness the karmic tendency, the taking tendency, and the renouncing tendency. We call this the karma mark, the gyan mark, but try to harness, harness them in such a way, those tendencies, that they'll be productive of something meaningful and spiritual. But that will, those ways, if we study them carefully, include factoring in some bhakti. Hmm? And bhakti indeed is the middle path. One can't be too renounced or too, too much of an enjoyer. One has to have a little propensity for enjoyment and a little propensity for detachment to enter into bhakti because bhakti will call for that. Sometimes you have to enjoy in the context of bhakti. Hmm? Darn it. <laughs> 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 and, and sometimes you have to go without also. Hmm? <coughs> but this all in the context only, of, if it will please Bhagwan in a particular instance, hmm? one way or the other makes no difference to me. And so it's really not taking or, or you know, said enjoying or, or renouncing, but loving Bhagwan hmm? and harmonizing these two, uh, two tendencies.